In the previous video in this series, I began the setup of a project file for a blow molding simulation. I imported a mesh file, and I defined a moving mold. Now in this video, I will continue with the definition of an inflating parison that contacts the mold, and set up the numerical parameters for the calculation of the results. I'll begin by creating a subtask for the parison. I'll use a shell model, and for this simulation, it'll be a generalized Newtonian flow that is isothermal. The domain will only include the parison mesh. As for the boundary conditions on the parison, I'll begin by imposing an inflation pressure on the entire mesh. Zooming in on the mesh, I can see that the pressure direction is pointing into the cylinder, and since I want it to expand outward, I'll define a negative value with a nominal magnitude of 1 times 10 to the 5th grams per millimeter second squared. This corresponds to 10 to the 5th pascal in SI units, or 1 bar. The time dependence for the pressure will also be a ramp function. Until a time of 0.2 seconds, I want the pressure to be zero. And then by a time of 0.5 seconds, I want it to ramp up to the nominal value I defined previously. So the multiplier here will be one. Next, I'll apply symmetry conditions on the boundaries of the parison, since I only meshed a representative portion. The symmetry plane for the vertical boundary is normal to the z-axis. And for the horizontal boundary, it's normal to the y-axis. None of the remaining solution variables that I'm going to set up will be time-dependent, so I can disable the Evol button now, and thereby avoid opening menus that aren't relevant. Now I can define the contact problem for the Parison subtask. For the contact wall, I'll select the mold subdomain, which I had earlier defined as participating in contact. I see that the penetration accuracy is set to 0.2 millimeters, which is reasonable for this mesh, which has overall dimensions on the order of 200 millimeters. Next, I'll zoom in so I can verify the orientation of the mold. I can indicate that the darts are not pointing in the direction of the mold body, but rather toward the mold cavity. Now I can define a new layer for the parison. For the material, I'll specify that the shear rate dependence for the viscosity is constant, and set the value to 30,000 grams per millimeter second, which corresponds to 30,000 pascal seconds in SI units. For the density, I'll input a value of 0 0.001 grams per cubic millimeter, and then click Inertia Terms to specify that the inertia be taken into account in the momentum equations. The initial thickness of the parison is constant at 1.2 millimeters. And that completes the subtask definition so I will return to the task menu. Having set up the mold and the parison, I now need to ensure that I have appropriate definitions for the numerical parameters of the iterative scheme used to calculate the results. I'll modify the transient iterative parameters so that I can set a bound for the maximum value of the time step at 0 0.02 seconds. Returning to the main menu, I'll define the outputs and set the units that will be passed along with the results. I need to modify the default selection to indicate that I've entered values corresponding to units of millimeters, grams, and seconds.
Now I can save and exit the session, accepting the current fields shown at the top of the menu. And that concludes the setup for this blow molding simulation using a shell mesh. And so at this point, I could run the Polyflow Solver by double clicking the Solution cell. Here again is an animation that shows the results of such a solution, with the meshes mirrored to show both sides. The colored contours show how the thickness of the parison changes as it is pinched off by the mold and then inflated into the final shape.